Every janitorial closet contains hazardous materials. We tend to forget that substances as common as cleaning supplies are hazardous. The more common a substance, the less attention we pay to ensure it's handled, stored, and cleaned up properly. This lax treatment of chemicals leads to mistakes and exposure to toxic, flammable, or corrosive materials. Have you ever painted without proper masking or ventilation? Have you ever knocked over bleach and just wiped it up with paper towels? How about something a little more hazardous? Did you know or follow proper handling and spill containment procedures? Your safety, along with those of your coworkers, should be top of mind when working with hazardous materials. Hazardous materials can be found on most job sites. The term hazardous materials includes flammable liquids or other substances, corrosive materials or acids, toxic or flammable gases, chemicals, explosives or blasting agents, and other materials that are flammable, toxic, or corrosive. Your company is required to have hazardous materials handling procedures clearly documented. You'll need to be trained in processes regarding handling of materials and hazard communication. Hazard communication includes hazardous chemical lists, safety data sheets, storage requirements, compliance with rules or regulations, and an emergency plan in case of spills. It's critical that you remain informed and aware of any hazardous materials being used. Each type has specific risks, PPE requirements, containment, and decontamination processes. Having these requirements communicated proactively will allow you to stay informed and understand your role in both handling the material daily and what to do in case of an emergency. This training will break down hazard communication basics, hazardous material safety training, and spill containment. Hazard communication increases the safety and well-being of employees. Not only should an employer have the safe handling instructions written, but these should include key areas, including a hazard chemical list with labeling and pictograms, safety data sheets or SDSs, safe handling and storage requirements, and compliance and emergency procedures. Each container of hazardous chemicals should be labeled with the name of the hazardous material, the name and address of the manufacturer, and the appropriate warnings, pictograms, and signal words. All containers need to be labeled regardless of size. Containers must be appropriate for either storage or dispensing hazardous material. Improper or incorrect use of a container can lead to a spill, leak, or expose you to toxic or corrosive material. Worn or torn labels need to be replaced, and you should report any inappropriate or missing labels to your supervisor. If you're unfamiliar with these processes, you'll need to receive specific training that covers label elements, pictograms, safety data sheet formats to understand the product and safety gear or first aid requirements, and a training acknowledgement form for record keeping and reporting. Pictograms are icons that indicate a risk or hazard. Some of the common pictograms indicate health hazards, flammability, corrosiveness, toxicity, irritants, and gas cylinders. Do you see any of these in your work environment? The purpose of pictograms is to help you identify at a glance what the risk of exposure to the hazardous material will be. The label for the hazardous material should provide the location of the safety data sheet. Many employers now use electronic software to easily search for SDS information. However, this is not a requirement and many employers still use paper copies. Both paper and electronic copies should be readily available, not in a locked office or password protected, for you to use during working hours. Each data sheet should include identification. This includes the product identifier, manufacturer name, address, phone number, recommended use, and restrictions on use. Hazard identification. This includes all hazards regarding the chemical and required label elements. First aid measures. This includes important symptoms or chemical effects and required treatment. Personal protection and exposure controls. These list OSHA's permissible exposure limits, threshold limit values, appropriate engineering controls, and personal protective equipment requirements accidental release or spills measures. These list emergency procedures, PPE, and methods of containment and cleanup. Safe handling and storage. This provides a list of precautions for safe handling and storage, including incompatibilities, physical or chemical properties. This provides each chemical's characteristics, stability and reactivity. This lists chemical stability and possibility of hazardous reactions and toxicological information. This includes routes of exposure, related symptoms, both acute and chronic effects, and numerical measures of toxicity. You'll need to review the training material and sign a training acknowledgement form that'll be kept on file. 
This training will be part of your new hire orientation process before beginning your duties, and a refresher training will be provided before any new hazardous materials are introduced to the workplace. When in doubt, ask your supervisor. Hazardous materials safety training needs to be extensive enough to include information on handling and storage, risk, and what to do in case of an emergency. All training will include clear instructions for proper PPE use. This information is also stored in the SDS. Specific hazardous materials require certain PPE, and you should follow the expectations exactly. Improper use of PPE can cause its own risks for heat stress, impaired vision or mobility, and inability to communicate. Your company should have both an emergency response plan and contingencies clearly documented. These plans will include procedures for handling accidental releases or spills and how to prevent exposure through proper handling and cleanup processes. Site safety and control plans should summarize the hazard on site and the associated risks. The site map should include clean zones, which is the area of the site that's free from contamination and that may be safely used. The hot zone or the area of potential or actual contamination or risk of exposure. The decontamination zone, which is the transition areas between the hot and clean zones. The site communications or command center, including an incident command system, which is used to coordinate emergency responses to accidental releases or spills, and the medical or triage area. All operating procedures and safe work practices should be clearly stated, strongly supported by training, and followed by every employee. The safety team or hazard communication officer will need to instate a hazard monitoring plan. This should include regular inventorying, label replacements, keeping the safety data sheets up to date, and ensuring the medical and decontamination areas have all the necessary supplies. You should be provided emergency and contingency plans, which will remain updated and easily accessed. Even with the best preventative measures and training, an accidental release or spill can happen. Most spills do not require an emergency response. Most spills can be easily contained by following the procedures indicated in the SDS. However, it's important to follow the three C's of spill containment. The first step in handling any spill is to communicate with the safety team or the hazardous communication officer. You want to provide details that quickly help assess risk. Ask, was the release accidental and will it be easily contained? or does it clearly require an emergency response? What was the hazardous material and its properties? Is it flammable, corrosive, or toxic? What is the degree of the hazard for toxicity? What is the physical state and properties? Is it powder or liquid or gas? And what are the specific circumstances of the accidental release? Where is the spill located? What is the level of ventilation in the area? How experienced are the area's occupants? The emergency plan and SDS information should be fully followed while trying to contain an accidental release or spill. Ensure you're using the proper PPE indicated for cleanup. This includes gloves, respirators, and any other protective gear that will limit exposure. Immediately isolate the area of the spill. You also want to ensure there is a map of the area that indicates the hot zones, the decontamination zones, and the clear zones. This information can be used to provide appropriate evacuation instructions. During cleanup, ensure you have all necessary equipment. Fire suppressants should be easily accessible and fully stocked. Appropriate disposal containers for the type of hazardous materials should be stocked and utilized to clean up the spill. The medical and first aid area should be prepared and everyone will need to follow the first aid procedures outlined in the SDS. You should not attempt to clean up a spill yourself unless you have the training required for that substance. You'll need to contact the command officer or lead safety specialist to ensure the proper process and safety procedures are followed. The lead will assess the situation and decide if authorities need to be contacted for an emergency cleanup. The proper handling, storage, and cleanup of hazardous materials should be taken very seriously. Each type of material can come with its own risk of exposure to toxicity, corrosion, or flammable components. You should receive training during new hire onboarding and also periodic retraining when a new hazardous material is introduced into the workplace. As always, when in doubt, ask your supervisor. Under OSHA standards, you're entitled to a safe workplace, appropriate training, and have the right to report unsafe work conditions without fear of retaliation from your employer. 
If you have a safety concern that your employer will not address, report it. Always be aware of the hazardous materials on site. Understanding the labels, pictograms, and how to look up the materials in the SDS is vital to your safety. Ensure you follow all instructions and heed the hazard communication guidelines. Consult the SDS when deciding on PPE, handling instructions, and awareness of the risk of an accidental release. Untrained employees should never attempt to clean up a spill themselves. Always gather the important information to relay to the command officer or safety team in charge of hazard communication. You'll need to follow all appropriate instructions to contain a spill. The importance of the proper use of PPE cannot be stressed enough. Remain in compliance with the PPE, safe handling or storage requirements, and understand how to navigate a site in case of an accidental release. If you're entirely new to chemical hazards, ask about our other HASCOM training titles to take a deeper dive.